So an allogeneic stem cell transplant, or rather an allo transplant, is a medical procedure that is again used to treat some forms of blood cancer. In an allogeneic transplant, what happens is that stem cells are obtained from a donor, which could be a family member or unrelated donor, and are given to patients to help rescue them and help to save them in the treatment of blood cancers. Allogeneic stem cell transplants tend to be reserved for patients with advanced forms of blood cancers. Uh, particularly, the patients who most usually receive allogeneic stem cell transplants tend to be patients who either have forms of aggressive acute leukemia, such as acute myeloid leukemia and acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Other patients who may benefit from an allogeneic stem cell transplant include patients with myelodysplastic syndromes or sometimes patients with advanced forms of lymphoma or even myeloma. So for a patient to be suitable for an allogeneic stem cell transplant, they must meet several criteria. Firstly, the disease must be a type of disease which we know will respond well to the transplant. Secondly, the patient needs to be fit and well for a transplant. So as this is a slightly more high-risk procedure, the patient must meet certain physical fitness criteria. Thirdly, the patient's disease must be well controlled at time of the transplant. And in addition, the patient must have a suitable, well-matched donor who can donate the stem cells so to help the patient for the transplant. For an allogeneic stem cell transplant, the process divided, is divided into three phases. The first phase is the phase which we call conditioning, and this usually takes typically seven to eight days. And during this period, the patient receives a cocktail of drugs to prepare them for the stem cell infusion. These drugs serve a few purposes. Firstly, they aim as chemotherapy to wipe out the bone marrow and clear it of any malignant cells which may be remaining. But they also empty out the bone marrow to create space for the stem cells to come in. In addition, these drugs serve to suppress the immune system of the patient so that the patient is less likely to reject stem cells which are coming in from a donor. Thereafter, we enter the second phase of the transplant, which is the stem cell infusion. The patient's stem cells are collected either fresh or frozen, depending where they're from, and these cells are infused into the patient slowly in a bag over a period of anything from half an hour to an hour or more. The stem cells, contrary to sometimes misconception, are not infused directly into the bone marrow. Generally, they're infused through a large central line into one of the patient's veins. And patients generally remain reasonably well during the stem cell infusion if adequate measures are taken. Once the stem cells are infused into the patient, we enter the last phase of the transplant process, which is the recovery phase. And during this period, we basically wait for the stem cells to take hold in the patient's bone marrow and start to slowly regenerate and grow. This period is probably the most critical period within the patient's and a transplant admission because the patient's immune system tends to be at its weakest uh, because we have ablated the bone marrow and cleared off all the normal healthy cells and we are waiting for the donor cells to start to grow. So during this period, patients may require more transfusions, they may be at a higher risk of infections, and they may be more prone to other side effects such as diarrhea or nausea. Eventually, after a period typically of around 10 to 14 days, the donor stem cells will start to recover and start to grow. And during this period, as the patient's counts start recovering, the patients generally start to recover well and all in all, hopefully, in many cases, within a period of four weeks, patients from admission can be discharged from the hospital. So after the four weeks of the transplant process, generally patients can be fit for discharge and they have to meet a few general criteria. They must be well and clear from any infections. They must generally be able to be reasonably mobile and able to care for themselves. And in addition, their blood counts must recover to a stage where they hopefully do not need any transfusions or minimal transfusions at least.